Hey everybody, it's Andre Shredan, and I'm here with another good friend. Um, it's I'm so glad when I get a chance to do this. I'm, I've been talking to industry prof I mean, industry big wigs, people know, that everybody know, but also I wanted you guys to meet some people who I know really well. So. Uh, my guest today is Nellie Silva, DMD, and she's from Advanced Dentistry of Collegeville, which is not too far from me in Pennsylvania. Um, but she's got a really interesting story. Um, her parents sacrificed everything in Nigeria for she and her five sibs to come to the U.S. And now she's one has one of the coolest practices. I mean, honestly, one of the coolest practices in the area, focusing on sleep medicine implants and TMD. And uh, I haven't been in the practice for a little while and she's expanded since the last time I was there, but she's a graduate of Howard University, the alma mater of the doctor I worked with, but also Temple University School of Dental Medicine, where I get to spend some time. Um, and we got a chance to meet, it's been about seven years back in 2014, something like that. And soon discovered that we only live about ten minutes apart. So, Nellie, thank you for being part of this. This is this has been yeah. a lot of fun to do. Thank you so much for having me. And you know, you know, when I have questions and and interviews like this, I get super excited to share. So, thank you for having me. Oh, I, yeah, and I, I, I you know. The, it's been crazy for the last couple of years because of Facebook and everything else. But I used to, yeah. you know, typically I would just stop by offices and say hi. And I feel like I haven't been out of out of the house in a couple of years. So it's good to connect again and see you. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you these six questions that I've asked everybody on the, on the interviews. Um, and, you know, I, I made sure that everybody had the questions ahead of time so that I didn't you know, give them the deer in the headlights look. <laughs> but, okay. So question number one. Think about a, a point in your life where you took a fork in the road mm -hmm. and, um, you know, compare yourself to the person you were uh, before you took that fork. Ah, when I saw this question, I was like, I love it. You know, and any healthcare professional could probably um, share the same sentiment that I'm, I'm going to be speaking um, and the fork in the road. You know, I think as a healthcare professional, once you uncover a no, you know, you, you're learning something and you're like, now I know this. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard to unknow it. Yeah. So I think um, hitting the fork in the road of understanding something and knowing that I had to continue on in my journey it was very strong big struggle, right? Because as a mom, as a wife, it can be very challenging, even as a business owner, right? So that fork, you know, I persevered through it. And um, today I am brighter. I am confident. I'm refreshed. I enjoy what I do. I speak in conviction um, and my patients feel it. So I think you know, hitting that fork in the road has only made me that much more brighter and um, energetic and just my best self. Yeah. yeah. And, I, you know, so everybody knows, full, full disclosure, you know, when I met Nellie, you know, she was kind of like, what do you do? How can you help me? And I said, you know what? You really don't need my help. You're good. Mm -hmm. You 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 got a path forward. And, you know, mm -hmm. I'm here. You call me anytime you have a question, you know, and I'll be that that sounding board for those things. But you don't need my help. You're 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 good. So just full disclosure, everybody knows that. So yeah. here's my here's my second question for you. Mm -hmm. What's the book that everyone should be reading and should uh -huh. be reading over and over again? Okay, so I have to disclose, I am a woman of faith, okay? I don't start my day without listening to Christian music. Um, Lauren Daigle is my favorite. So the book I read all the time is my Bible. Like, I read that, okay? That's sort of my mainstay. And from there, my most favorite book, which I've shared with all my mentees out there, I have seven of them. Um, they're young. I actually have some, you know, older mentees as well. Um, but I gave all seven mentees, John Maxwell's book, 20, 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. And um, my most favorite chapter is The Law of Explosion. That's chapter 20. Um, the book is pretty cool because you don't have to read it in order. You can read it in, in however you you have your pleasure. But um, I just love that book. That's a good one. That's a good one. Well, that's, and you know, John Maxwell is going to, I bet is going to be a theme throughout these, these questions, because I have a feeling that's going to be a book that a lot of folks, a lot of, an author, that a lot of folks pick. You cannot, that's a good one. 
Juan. He has so many books. If you haven't read Juan, hey, listen, I think there's a problem. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, no, I agree with you. <laughs> no. Okay, so here's question number three. Um, give me one of one or two of your favorite quotes. So when I when I saw this question, I'm like, you know, sometimes it's just as easy as just reach for the stars, you know. And I think you know, most people, you know, as a an executive, I've taken a lot of leadership courses and training. You know, you take your you learn about your. Um, the type of person you are. Yeah. And I think for our young people, they don't really have the pleasure to, the luxury to have these tests. And I think we get those tests in the beginning at the earliest stage and understand it in its most simplistic form, you know, your natural gifting. And I will tell you when you reach for the stars, it doesn't necessarily mean that you do it by yourself. Yeah. Cause Hey, listen, an apple goes really good with peanut butter. Right. So, Reaching for the stars doesn't mean that you do it by yourself. So I think everyone is capable of reaching for the stars. And wow. the other one is, I mean, Nike did it, just said it so simplistic. Just do it. It's just that simple. Yep. You know, say you're going to do something and just do it. You know, because there are people out there that uh, the most simplistic way of measuring your performance is just listening to you speak and waiting for you to do the thing that you spoke of. So just do it. Is the it. Other That's a good one. That one, And yeah. I can actually, uh, you know, I can put the little logo on there, too. <laughs> it's a good one. <laughs> so here's here's question number four. What is the high tech thing? Has a plug or has a battery that you can't live without? So, you know, when we're speaking of high tech, I'm thinking dental, right? Uh, I'm a healthcare professional. So my high tech thing is my CBCT. I cannot live without it. <laughs> you know, I'm a psychologist, I'm an airway, aborted certified airway doctor, and I am a TMD master. So I can't do any of that mastery without my CBCT. So high tech. That's a good toy. That's a good toy. Oh, all right. I, I remember when you were getting it. <laughs> so, that's a good one. <laughs> Paulo, my husband, I need this thing. Don't understand. You're not listening. That's a good one. Got a big, heavy uh, cord going to it. So, all right. So now let's cut the cord and let's say number five, what is the low tech thing? No plug, no batteries. What's the low tech thing you can't live without? Plug or no batteries? Okay, so wait, my my AirPod could work no, with that. No, no, no. That has no. a battery. That has a battery in it. Okay, low tech with no battery. Wow. Oh, wow. There's nothing. See, this is a world of technology. It's so tough yeah. to think about this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry. All right. All right. I'll let you go with that one. All right. Well, that's good. So, uh, and just remember, I'm going to be editing this for the next couple of weeks. So, if you think of something, okay. you let me know and I'll put it in. <laughs> All right. All right. So, now here's question number six. All right. Mm -hmm. um, what advice would you give? the Nelly from that fork in the road that you've taken now. And of course, you know, I, I always qualify this by with everybody takes multiple forks in their life, you know, could be, you know, the, deciding to go into dental school it could be whatever fork you took, you know, what advice would you give any stage of, of yourself? Mm, wow. Um, it's really just stepping into the room. You know, I think sometimes we sort of kind of psych ourselves out and say, no, I'm not worthy to be in the room. Yeah. And when you get in the room and people are like, wow, so welcoming. And you're like, wait, why was I overthinking that? So I'd say the old Nelly would have been like, should I go in the room? You know, so yes, yeah, step into the room. There are people in the room that are waiting for you. And the other thing I would say to my old self would be, remember that when you're progressing, you are always going to start at zero again. So always be open to know that you don't have to be stellar at everything, you know, create it, put it into play and watch it. And if it plateaus, keep growing it. And I, and I think really that's where I am today. It's like, I've been really you know, patient and not necessarily listening to other people tell me how I should perceive it. You know, I think God has created each and every one of us to perceive it in ourselves, right? So that when it's not of you, you sort of feel like, 
wait, what, wait, and you get a little kind of anxious because you're waiting for someone to kind of tell you the next thing, mm -hmm. but everyone has it in them so that when you know it yourself and you start progressing, it becomes easier and easier. So, I mean, listen, I think I've sort of like understood life now at my age, 43 years, 43, <laughs> eight. And, um, yeah, I can only hope for the best from this point on. Um, I really feel like I'm fulfilled and, and continue to be fulfilled. And I think um, I, I know I'm being fulfilled and continue to be fulfilling because where I go, I'm making an impact. Now I fully understand. You mentioned earlier, your parents left Nigeria. I want to make it clear. You know, I had a great life in Nigeria. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not here, to, but I had a driver in Nigeria. The driver still have is in my family he worked wow. with my dad oil company so my dad left that to come here so i never understood his traditional ways never because my mom was very free spirit i don't speak the dialect i don't know how to cook <laughs> you're just like just go nelly learn go to school that was my mom my dad was like go to school what kind of school are you going to you know you're all how much are you school is free remember you know but what he was saying was, and what she was saying, same thing, but different sound, right? My dad was saying, whatever you do, it's not about what you do, your job. It's about you making an impact in the world. It doesn't have to be a huge thing. Yep. It's about making an impact. So I'm so blessed and so excited and um, on my journey. And I cannot even thank my parents enough for the sacrifices that they've made because you know, my dad, even for a man to leave a high level job and start from the beginning yep. and, you know, rise up, he only wanted the very best for us. So yeah. I'm on this path, back. but I yeah. Was, I was going to say that goes back to what you said. Don't be afraid to start from zero again. And I think that's a, that's a good quote. So here's a question that I didn't prepare you for, but it's an easy one. Okay. Nellie is who she is today because of luck or mm -hmm. because of hard work? Wow. All right. So I don't think it's luck because I think the way I'm, I've been made, that's not luck, you know? Um, I think hard work, again, I am a Christian. I mean, listen, this is who I am and I'm a woman of faith. I'm growing. So when I say hard work, it's not like I was hard laboring but it was hard work because as a healthcare professional, anyone out there is a healthcare professional, you know, sometimes patients can suck the energy out of you. Sometimes the dentists around you can be not the most nicest people and you may have to face the most challenging obstacles, you see. But when you are rooted and you know who you are and how you were made and you fully understand that, let me tell you something. Hard work is here, right? It's how you see it, how you think it, because of how your heart is telling you how to perceive that. So I don't have to hard work and labor because I'm hard working. You see, I come in with my ear pod. You asked me low tech. I was going to say my <laughs> ear pod. Because I use this to hear my team, I can listen to a patient, but I have my ear pod and it always has music in it. And I'm always singing with my patients or singing for my patients. So hard work, I don't even know if it's really hard work. I just, I know that it's just been a step I've had to take. And only now I'm relishing in like, wow, one would look and be like, dang, that's hard work. I don't know. Maybe I'm just keep running, not making any sense. So. <laughs> I get it. No, sometimes, you know, what, working hard isn't hard. Ah! There you go, Andre. That's it. That's it. When you know, especially when we have processes, it's it's not as hard as it thinks. You know, if people think so. And I, one more thing, Andre. What's that? I'll never forget what you told me. I post on my wall. I don't know if you've seen it. Oh. You told me, here's an orange. What would you do with this orange? And I'm like, eat it. You're like, and, and I was like, oh, and um, drink it. And you go, and wouldn't you make a candle out of it? What do you do? Aromatherapy. I'm like. And one day I had to look at myself. I'm like, wait, I'm attractive. I'm photogenic. I can pose. Wait, I can model. Can I do this on the side? You know what I mean? Couldn't I leverage, you know, you know, my creativity, you know, doing something outside of dentistry? You know, I think once you really know your orange, right, your fullness, 
you do these things, like you said, it's not hard work because it's the thing that is just innate in you that it's like a cake that's been battered and you can't really pull out those tiny ingredients. It's like that's the right. cake, good. the orange is just so good. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> you got to squeeze the juice. That's my theme. There's no squeeze it until there's nothing left and make sure that you get uh, get the rinds sent out to potpourri companies and you get the seeds out. To the, there is nothing left when you're done. I'm telling you. And you ate that orange and you drank it and you were like, no, there's nothing else. That's it. That's it. That's when we can retire. <laughs> nice. So. Thank you so much for doing this. It's good to see you. Not see you, oh, but see you. But, uh, yes. And I will talk to you soon, but thanks again. Yeah. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.